Hey guys, Helen Hartsmith here from the Heart of the Witches Path YouTube channel. Hope you're having a good day. Not too shabby here. Um, a couple of years ago, Kathy and I did a video where we went shopping at the dollar store for items that a new witch could go out, pick up for, you know, a dollar a piece, so rather inexpensive, um, and get their practice started. And it was a pretty popular video on the channel here, and it got me thinking, what about an experienced witch? You know, are there things at the dollar store for an experienced witch, someone who's been practicing for a long time, someone who doesn't need quarter candles, who doesn't need, <clears throat> excuse me, altar cloths, things like that. More refined components that an experience which might need for spell work and things like that. So I went to the dollar store again. I don't go there that often because I find a lot of stuff. <laughs> so, but I went there um, to shop with a definite eye for what do I pick up there when I go. And so I thought, well, I'm going to share with you what I found. So let's get started. The first thing that I wanted to share is I've seen a couple of people on YouTube talk about a witchy car kit, uh, something that they keep in their trunk, something that has provisions that say if they want to um, collect some grave dirt or need to do a ritual or a spell on the go, having things like matches and candles and perhaps a little shovel, <laughs> you know, that might come in handy. And so this was like one of the first things that I saw there, mostly because we're in, I'm, this uh, video is being filmed in the dead of winter, so to speak, in Michigan. And so, of course, spring things are being put out and things of that nature. So this was one of the first things that I found, and this is just a little gardening shovel that I intend to add into the car kit that I'm putting together for myself. So this is something that, a concept that I'd only heard of recently, and so there's definitely things to be had at the dollar store that you can put into a kit like that. Okay, moving on, the next thing, they've got a cute little uh, crafting area now at, um, at my Dollar Tree, anyhow, which is a Dollar Tree dollar store. And so uh, I've picked things up like this before from there. These are little spray bottles, little plastic spray bottles, unfortunately. But something like this is really handy to have on hand in case you want to put together some kind of a spray for a cleansing purpose or um, to bring um, joy into your life or to dispel something like dispel anxiety or depression or something like that. It's good to have some of these on hand that if you have that need, oh look, I've got them right there. And two of them in a package for a dollar, that's pretty good. And these are two ounces, so that's also um, a good price. The next thing I found is actually something that I've purchased before, but at a Walmart, and I love these. These are little glass containers. So you can see that there, it's like a glass vial. We've got four in a package, and they each have a little screw top, metal screw top lid. Now these can be hand, um, used for, again, a multitude of purchase of possibilities. Um, you can do something like a spell jar. Um, you can do um, something like um, making an aroma, um, an aroma vial, bottle, whatever you want to call it, um, that is an aromatherapy. Um, again, for something like bringing happiness or um, helping with sleep or something along those lines. Um, any number of things these are really, really good for. And four for a dollar, I was kind of a peg clearer and I bought all five packages that were left at my particular Dollar Tree. 
Now the next thing I found I thought was really really interesting and something that I didn't anticipate finding and that is this 36 piece set of wooden dies. So these are six sided dies and I was looking at them and I'm like okay that's interesting what could I do with those and immediately what came to mind is um, there's 36 in here that means there's 24 that means I can make a set of runes out of these and I do have a video where I talk about how you can make your own set of runes I'll go ahead and link that in the box below but I'm like this is really cool because you can actually put the rune on all six sides so if you do some kind of a casting type divination then you don't have to really look for uh, the actual rune itself because it's well it's gonna come up <laughs> so and with some left over you can also uh, do some other rune or sigil work that um, that you can make as charms or talismans or something along those lines. So a dollar for a package of those, that's a super cheap set of runes. So I love that. Um, the next thing that I picked up was this really cool organizer. So behind me, and this might, I don't know if this like really falls in with like a witchy category, but it's four witchy items. And so that's why I'm including it. I have a space in my sacred space here that looks a little untidy and it's actually right behind my head. So luckily you don't see it that often, but let me, let me just show you. Oh, oh. Oh, look at that. <laughs> this is an area where I house different things that I make like potions, flower essences, um, some magical tinctures, incense, things like that. And so a lot of it involves small bottles. And so they can get kind of unruly. And I thought something like this, I'm trying to stay away from plastic as much as possible. So this is metal that actually has a plastic coating, but it was the best thing that I could come up with. And so this is like a little organizational thing that hopefully will help me kind of keep those guys under control. That's an area that I want to, um, overhaul sometime soon so yeah uh let's see oh yeah let's go let's do this so the next thing that i wanted to talk about is picture frames sometimes if we're working with spirits spirit guides deities things like that uh, we want to have representations of them on our altars and sometimes it can be difficult to say, say you're working with an obscure god or goddess that the the companies out there don't make statuary of. So how are you going to deal with um, a representation? I will oftentimes print out pictures and put them in frames. Another thing that I'll also do is if I'm teaching a class, I, and have pictures that I want to share and especially if I want to pass them around I will put them in frames just to kind of keep them in good shape. We've also done spell work uh, that involves writing out words of power or affirmations or things like that and putting it in a frame will again protect it so it doesn't get curled up, doesn't get ripped, doesn't get wet, things like that. So the the dollar store has tons of sizes and you'll um, want to pay attention to whether or not uh, this particular one has the little kickstand in the back um, but if you are putting something on the wall then that might be something that you don't necessarily need or if it's going to be something that you actually place on a surface then you're definitely going to want to have a little kickstand with it but these are I can't tell you how many of these I've bought and I keep them around so that I can switch things out for different classes or for different spell work things like that so frames another really handy thing um, that you can pick up at your dollar store the next thing that I wanted to talk about is um, 
fashion dolls. <laughs> I, you know, I won't call it by that B name that most of us know of, right? So this is an, a, an 11 inch fashion doll. And I was, I remember the first time that I heard of doing spell work with a doll like this. And it was actually Dorothy Morrison that talked about it in a class that I happened to be in at Convocation that she was teaching. Fashion dolls can have a really effective um, outcome when used in spell work. Um, dolls come in with different hair colors, um, eye colors, things like that. You can kind of like um, tailor your spell work for someone and um and and get an appropriate doll um their cavity their body cavities are usually hollow so you can do things like stuff them with herbs or waxes or uh, paper with sigils or power names or whatever down inside and I've actually been thinking about doing a video that talks more about this so if you're interested in a video like that please let me know in the the comments and that's something that I'll definitely put on top of the list if there's um, a desire for it okay um, the next thing I want to talk about, we actually talked about in that initial uh, dollar store shopping for beginners video, but I feel like the dollar store has really kind of up, upped its game in recent years, and that's candles. And I grabbed, I grabbed way more than I probably needed to, but I think what I'm going to do is some of these are going to end up going in that car kit that I talked about. So... Um, candles are now available in the, those battery-operated um, flameless versions. And so the dollar store has gotten these in a lot of sizes. Like you've got this tea light. Um, I've purchased taper candles. And I've also purchased um, like a, a pillar candle that is just about as big around as this one and taller. And so I like to have something like this in my arsenal because there are times when you might have to do a little spell or a ritual and having an open flame isn't necessarily um, something that you're able to do. So having these flameless options, definitely handy. And I like to... Um, my particular dollar store recently, they've been having a lot of candles in little glass containers. And that's all very well and good. If I do something like that, then I tend to buy something that's got a lid on it. Because once the candle is gone, I can then upcycle it and use it for something like herb storage or a jar spell something like that. Um, but sometimes you just want the candle because you... <laughs> You, If you're like me, I tend to have a lot of empty uh, candle holders around the house, too. So you got to refill them. Um, so it's kind of cool that I actually found four different candles in this size. So that's kind of nice. And this white one is unscented. The, the magenta pinky one is not or is scented, sorry. This creamy one, not scented. And this one is scented. So there are some options out there that are unscented if that's something that applies to you. I know that I have a coven member that she can't burn a lot of candles in her house because um, her husband's allergies can't take it. Um, I also found votives, which these can be really tough to find. And uh, you do have your tea lights too. Now I do have to say, so this package has two, four, six, eight, ten. So there's 20. Yep, 20. There's 20 in this. 20 for a dollar. Not a bad price, but I think you can do better by going to like a Walmart or um, if you've got an Ikea in your area, they have bigger packages for less money. But if you're at a dollar store, 
you can find something like that there. So I wanted to talk a little bit about candles because they've really diversified and it's nice to see that the dollar store is kind of keeping up with that. And so you should be able to find something that you know, in a size and maybe not a color, but in a size, if you go with white, I actually tend to do a lot of white candles because you can imbue them with whatever intention you want. And then you don't have to keep a ton of different colors on hand for whatever spell work that you might think that you want to do in the future. Uh, white just kind of serves me a little easier. Um, okay, so next is the actually the food area. The food area has some gems that you can use for spell work. The first one being dried beans. I've been looking at using dried beans a lot more in spell work uh, because as vegetarians, we tend to have a lot of varieties of dried beans on hand and they actually have magical properties, which is really cool. So red kidney beans are actually something that's really good to use for wisdom, for love, and for health. So um, they don't get too exotic, unfortunately. I want to say my dollar store, they had the red kidney beans, they had pinto, they had lentils, and I think they had like great northern beans. So not a super huge selection, but a pound, wait, is this a pound bag? Yeah, this is a pound bag for a dollar. You can either buy them for magical purposes or buy them, have them on hand for food, and as you need them, kind of take them. Either way. Um, also, I would encourage you to look at the spice section for some spices that you can use in magic. Now, I didn't necessarily buy onions to... Um, to use them for magical purposes. I bought them because we actually needed them in our kitchen, but I wanted to make sure that I talked about spices because you can find things like sage. You can find things like um, thyme, majorum, those cooking spices that also have magical purposes. If you're a kitchen witch, you probably um, hit this up uh, already, but it's definitely something to keep in mind um, to replenish your um, your spices, uh, your spice plants for spell work, rosemary, basil, things like bay, things like that. Um, and then the last thing that I wanted to talk about, um, I really love the fact that um, you can get salt in some pretty hefty containers. And there's all different kinds. So this one is actually a coarse Himalayan salt. And so this is great for spell work. This is something that you can use for doing, um, I had mentioned um, aroma vials or aroma vi bottles. I'm not really sure what they're called. Um, but it's this idea of using um, salt and essential oils and dried herbs to create blends that can help induce things like happiness, can um, maybe dispel things like depression and anxiety. Um, this is something that I've actually heard of from an aromatherapist that I want to give a try. And so you can use those little vials that I talked about earlier along with this and add your essential oils and maybe some dried herbs that you have on hand and, and create something that's useful for that purpose. If you're interested in something like that, um, like I said, this is something that I want to be playing with. So it's an idea for a video in the future. So if you're interested, let me know. So coarse salt, um, this is um, a coarse sea salt that's not as coarse. It's, um, I don't know if you can see that. It's still f fine enough that you could probably cook with it. Um, but it's not as coarse as this one. Can you see how coarse that is? Um, but you can also find, I've also bought fine salt there as well. So if you're doing heavy duty protection, heavy duty, um, banishing, like this is going to go in the car. This is going to go in that car kit that I talked about, um, just so that I have salt in my car if I need it. So... There we go. That is what I found at my dollar store 
for the experienced witch. And I'm sure that there's probably other things that I saw. And I think the dollar store kind of cycles things in and out a little bit. So it's definitely worth taking a wander through your local dollar store maybe once every couple months or something like that, just to see if there's something there that you can keep on hand that will be uh, beneficial for your practice. Just some things to think about. If you liked this video or learned something from it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, hit that red button. And also, I encourage you to hit the little bell. That will give you a notification when I post a new video. And that kind of helps me with my analytics and stuff like that. So, please, thank you. Um, what have you purchased from the dollar store that you were either impressed by, used a lot, you know, something along those lines? I want to hear because we could all use a little suggestion every now and then, right? Um, please make sure to check the description box for uh, links for social media, things like that. And thank you for watching. Thanks for taking the time to walk the path for a little while with me. And until next time, blessed be.